Hi, Scottish Mudlarkin here with Nicole and Craig. We've come along to a place called Lime Kilns, which is on the banks of the River Forth, and we're going to see what we can find. Thank you so much for watching, liking and commenting on the videos. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please take a moment to subscribe to the channel. Thanks also to everybody for helping us out through Etsy, Kofi and Amazon. That really makes a huge difference to us, so thank you all so much for that. Well, we're just here, and there's a really nice piece of blue transferware. Oh! See if you can see it. Oh, I think you can see it. Really nice big chunky piece as well. That's lovely. Yeah, and so really chunky. Unusual colour as well. Oh, I'm taking that. So, second find of the day. Huge chunk of blue glass. Really, really lovely and quite unusual colour. So, uh, let's see if we can make that into a pendant. Really, really chunky pendant. I think that'll look great. Chunky sea glass today. I wonder, it kind of looks like the right colour to be a bit of a cod bottle, but who can say? It's just a shard. But it's a nice colour, a nice sea foam colour. Take that. So just coming across the sand here, it's getting a little bit muddy and we found this. Now I'm not sure what that could be. Oh, so I've got something that I want to show you over here. Uh, I found this piece of glass, it's sort of like, a, it looks like black glass, so I'm guessing it's green, but I couldn't really see the light through it myself. Ah oh, yeah, I can only just, just see the light through, it's really thick and old piece of, uh, yeah. kind of olive green glass, yeah? Yeah, so that'd be like black glass. Yeah, pirate glass. Yeah, more of that. <laughs> but there's something over here I just want to show you. Okay. Uh, it's quite interesting, very nicely decorated, but I think impractical. Oh, okay, let's have a look. Yeah. So that's the piece that I was just telling you about. It's beautifully decorated, but I think your first thought when you saw it was the same as the first thought that I had. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think it might be the edge of a chamber pot. It is huge, it see could my be, hand? Yeah. yeah, but it's, it's decorated on the side oh. as much as it's decorated on the top. It's a really lovely piece. Oh yeah, that would have been really pretty. That would have been, yeah, a prized chamber pot for somebody <laughs> with a posh bum. Yeah, I think we'll leave it here though. Yeah. It's a very cool find. Yeah, so, you reckon it's a chamber pot as well then? I do, yeah, I do think it might be a chamber pot. It's a really cool find though, so it's very promising. Let's see what we can find over there. Out into the mud. Yeah, we've got the wellies on. So aside from these early first finds, we're not finding a huge amount in this area. There's a lot of seaweed here. It's a mixture of uh, muddy and sandy ground. So we'll see, we'll take a little walk along here. If we don't find anything, we're gonna go on to the other side of the harbour. It's a nice piece of glass, it's a nice colour and we can see some writing on that which is nice for a change. I'm not sure what that writing says. Uh, here's Nicole, oh. I think Nicole's going to wipe that for me. <laughs> <laughs> We're also finding these really nice pieces of shell. So I mean these bigger oyster shells, I don't think we can use them for anything but I wonder if we can use, use this for something. Ah. Maybe we could make some old fashioned buttons. Oh right, yeah. Oh that reminds me, I've actually found two shells and I'll put them here. Now yeah. you see this very much looks like a hole has been cut into these shells uh, and I know that they used to make buttons like that so maybe these are very very old uh, shells with um, holes for buttons. Yeah, some mother of pearl buttons. Yeah. If ever you've seen them on a garment, <laughs> they come <laughs> from a shell like that. Yeah. Okay, so what do you make of the writing on that? Is that something that we've seen before? It's W-A-N by the looks of things. <laughs> hmm, yeah, I thought at first it was going to be for Lady Bank, but it's obviously not. So no. I'm not really sure what that'll be short for. Okay, well we'll take that along and we'll have a think about it whilst we do. Yep. 
So I've just caught up on a call and there's these two pieces that I found. Now this is another piece of black glass. Really nicely frosted pieces of black glass as well. It's a wee bit shiny here, but it's these, these letters. Now what I'm gonna do is I'll ask Nicole uh, to lift that up to the light so we can get a clearer look at that. Oh. But I reckon that says whiskey, what do you think? Just H-I-S-K. Oh. Now you reckon that might say Kilmarnock? Yeah, yeah. I, I think so, Kilmarnock and then yeah, I think you're right, whiskey. Yeah. And then there's a, like a parcel S on the top. That's a great find. We'll have to have a look and see if we can find a distillery that's in Kilmarnock. Yeah. Given that it's Scotland, I think we'll probably manage. <laughs> Possibly, yeah. See if we can see what the bottle looked like before. Yeah. It's an interesting shape, isn't it? Yeah. So, there's another wee piece of blue transferware. This looks very grubby. Can't see what it was. I'm not even sure if that's decoration on the back or if it's just, uh, I don't know, aging and dirt. But yeah, the front, I can see there was a nice wee design on there. So, this looks like it's uh, coal. It's extremely light, so we're going to take just a couple of handfuls and put them in wee jars. all we need. It's quite the day for chunky black pirate sea glass. If this piece, now that looks like it's a much narrower bottle than I'm used to seeing for this kind of glass. Looks like it's a bottom, part of a bottom and it's very very thick. Oh wow. Very very thick. Yeah. That's quite an old piece I reckon. Yeah, yeah, we're finding lots of pirate glass here. And yeah. Pieces with lettering. Oh, that's you pretty can cool. See that there. Okay, that's much better. I, I can even see it down the little monitor here, so <laughs> that's grand. You'll be able to see what that is. Very nice. So we're not sure if we'll get around here, it might be a bit muddy. You can see uh, part of the old harbour wall here's collapsed. But we'll see. If we can get around, we shall see what's on the other side. And on the way, we have to stop for these little pieces of blue. Can't leave them behind. A wee bit of bottleneck there or a very slim poison bottle maybe. Oh, That's nice. a nice wee piece. It's quite beautiful down here though. Just looking out over the River Forth here. Sun kind of glistening off the surface, lovely. Very quiet, calm day today. One of the warmest days we've had so far. It's just beautiful. So I'm not sure if you can make that out, but you can see where the harbour ended there and we can see the entrance stroke exit to the harbour. And I'm not sure if that's a natural harbour wall up front but certainly the old harbour wall here on the right, uh, that's in a state of disrepair. That has crumbled some time ago. No idea why. My guess is that the building of the harbour walls here augmented this natural harbour inlet. I just heard a gasp from Nicole, so I'm going to go down and see what that is. Okay, so I was up on the harbour wall there and I heard a wee excited noise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah. you got? It's a massive piece of pink flash glass. Very cool. Yeah, let's have a look at it. That's quite big, isn't it? That's a really large piece. Wow. Have we found a piece as big as that before? Oh, maybe once, but it's really rare and it's in very nice, nice frosted condition. So there isn't really any shiny bit there. So that's really lovely. Yeah, it's very cool. Mm. And you know what I've seen right in front of you? A button. Yeah. I just spotted that as well. Let's go get the button. So, can you see the button? Mm -hmm. Just shout at the screen if you see it. Okay, let's point that one out. It's pretty obvious, I think. Ta-da! Yeah. Right there. It kind of looks a little bit plasticky, but it might be Mother of Pearl. Who knows? Let's have a look. Yeah, what do you reckon? I mean, mm. probably can't tell by touch, right? Mm. 
it does feel a little bit plasticky, so I think it's probably a plastic button. I'll turn it around. It's cute as a button. We're taking it. Yeah, it's a wee button. It's a plastic button, but nonetheless. Yeah, yeah, it's a cool find. Yeah, and plastic's been around for a while. <laughs> yeah, might be bigger light. <laughs> So we were just walking to the other side of the harbour when I spotted this incredibly unnatural looking blue thing. I thought it's got to be plastic, it's far too blue and, and nice and colourful, but it's not. It's a piece of milk glass. And it has a really interesting set of uh, marks there. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, do you know what though? Mm. I've just found, I found a... Um, I th is this a clay pipe? I think this is a piece of clay pipe. It is, yeah. That's amazing. It's a nice wee decoration across the top of the, uh, the bowl there as well. Yeah, and it's only our second piece. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that's really Now, nice. I'm not sure if you can see uh, the kind of contours and the, the design hmm. that's on that piece of milk glass, but I, I, I'm not sure what to make of that. Yeah. Looks like an ice cream cone. That's exactly what I thought. It looks like a waffle. That's very cool. I can actually see what looks like an embossed uh, design in there as well, but I have no idea what that shape might be. Yeah, I can see that now. It's a little bit of a design kind of nearer the bottom of it. That's right, yeah. Hmm, very pretty. I found something. That is very cool. <laughs> That's really nice. Yeah, it's a base of a little bottle. It might be like a nail varnish bottle. Let's have a look at it. Now oh. that's interesting. Let's have a look at the inside of that again. Mm -hmm. Now you can see there's very little space for liquid in there. Yeah, so maybe it was a perfume bottle. Possibly, yeah. yeah. At least maybe something quite expensive or tinctures. Yeah. Now there's markings on that glass, isn't there? Yeah, two lines, but I can't really make out anything else. Okay. Mm. Very cool. It's so quiet down here today. I can actually, probably can't hear it, but I can hear the bubbling of the water in the sand here. <laughs> it's an amazing sound. Oh, there's a piece of glass down here. Let's have a look at that. Don't know if you can see that. There's glass in here. Quite a big bottle bottom. But I can't actually see what... Uh, what marks there might be on that? It's so dirty. It's covered in slime. Not old. No pontial mark. I don't see any other identifying marks. So I reckon we'll leave that where it is. But what I might take is this. Now I don't know if you can see that irregular shaped piece here. Just here. Now that is part of a bottle. Um, yeah, so I've just taken you along to where I found those bottle mm -hmm. bottoms. Um, what do you make of them? Can you identify them at all? I reckon they're quite new, maybe 60s, 70s, um, very little identifying marks, apart from the one that you brought along. Yeah, let's have a look at it. Okay, so what have we got here? Yeah, this does look like the bottom of a wine bottle, possibly. Yeah. This one looks a little bit newer. Well, no, older, rather. <laughs> Um, it is square, which is quite an unusual shape nowadays. It's really mucky as well, mm. that one. Yeah, and this one says uh, Dunfermline on it, and I think it's pretty much the same uh, bottle bottom to the bottle that you found here a couple of years ago. That's cool. So should we take that one back and compare it to the other one that we've got uh, back in the house? Oh yeah, and I think it might be a good size for a tea light. So we'll yeah. take this one and we'll probably leave these here. Very cool. If they're muckier. So that's very interesting. Right beside this 
uh, bottle that uh, we were just speaking about a moment ago. We walked up here to change the battery and we saw these two pieces. I'm not sure if they're from the same thing, but uh, maybe Nicole can uh, maybe unearth that and we'll have a closer look at it. Okay, let's see what it is. I think that looks like oh. it's ceramic. It looks very heavy. Oh, uh. that's a bit of a pipe. <laughs> that's rubbish. It oh, looks well. like a really nice vase or something. That's pure rubbish. <laughs> okay, what is this piece then? Maybe we got yeah. something nicer there. That's glass. Yeah, that is glass. Um, it might be from like a pickling jar because it's got a very, very uh, wide open rim. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a big piece. Yeah. We can maybe put that beside this uh, yeah. standard bottle yeah, size to give you a... my hand? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This would have been a very large opening, maybe about this size, roughly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Let's Very see cool, what else we can find here. Yeah, there's got to be some really cool stuff here. Yeah. What do you make of that? I think this is like brass, maybe copper. Hmm, maybe copper because it's got verdigris on it. So yeah, that'd be cool. Let's yeah. take that. How we look. Ah. Oh, it's heavily corroded on that <laughs> side. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But there's some lines, some markings. We can take a closer look at that at home. Yeah. I think we'll definitely take that. Yep. Now we've just come along to a different part of the harbour and we're finding all this kind of steampunk stuff. It's great. It's awesome. Another spark plug for us. I think we can use that when we find out how to use the others. Okay, so yeah, we're having some good finds up this part of the... Well, I'm not going to call this a beach. Is it a foreshore? That's the river Forth behind uh -huh. us there, or off yeah. to the side. Yeah. So yeah, it's a foreshore. Uh -huh. It's a muddy foreshore. Yeah. And yeah, we're finding some interesting things. Yeah, isn't this where you found the bottle a couple of years ago? It is indeed, yeah. Yeah, I remember you going down those steps behind me there ah, to pick it up. Okay, so you think there's another one here? Who knows? <laughs> Let's have a look. We'll see. Yeah. So I'm not entirely sure what this piece is. It's an interesting shape. It's ceramic. It has an internal screw. Maybe part of a container, a bottle, a jug of some kind. Interesting piece. We don't often find cutlery. <laughs> I think we actually want to often find cutlery. Nonetheless though, we've got a wee bit of a fork. Very modern looking fork. Heavily corroded. Must add a plastic, maybe a wooden handle. I guess plastic. That's all gone. We'll take that off the beach. So I've no real idea what this is. I'm going to hold it very close into the camera so you can have a look. The last time we found something like this was, uh, was it West Beams? It was, yeah. And we think it was a fossil of a crab claw. Now this one I'm not sure, it very much looks similar. It has these kinds of... Uh, claw grabby bits. <laughs> yeah, little bumps there, yeah, yeah. Somebody who's a biologist might know the right term for that. Uh, but it looks like it's almost glass inside. I'm not sure if you can see the yeah. kind of shade uh -huh. on that. I'll try and oh, pick okay. the light up with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Well, I think we should definitely take that. We should definitely take it. It'll <laughs> pair up with the other one. Mm -hmm. But I'm not convinced that this is a fossilised crab claw. But I can't think what else it might be. So the closer that I get to the River Forth, uh, the more large kind of masonry I'm finding here. I'll just turn the camera on to that just now so you can see. Yeah, so I'm finding a lot more of this large masonry. And I'm also finding a lot more tile fragments, so roofing tiles of the sort that we can see scattered around down here. So right about here is where we reach the end of the stones and we're about into mud. And just as I get here, there's this little piece of glass to greet me. Now, that's a very interesting shape. I'm kind of inclined to think that it might be something to do with uh, one of these isolators or resistors uh, that we've seen before. Quite odd.
Yeah, well, I'm definitely going to be taking that along. Really nice big uh, air bubble in the glass there at the bottom. Well, let's see what Nicole makes of that. I'm not sure if you can see what I'm pointing the camera at. But it goes just in front of me. Well, I say just, quite a wee bit in front of me. Let's go see what she's found. <laughs> so, have you had any luck? Yeah, I found something really cool. Oh wow, okay. Uh, and what's that? It's a pipe stem and it's the longest one we've ever found. Well, that's huge. Yeah. And it's really thick as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope there might be a couple of uh, marks on it. We'll see. That's a very cool find. You must be really chuffed with yourself for that. I am, yeah, yeah. We found more clay pipe pieces uh, than we've ever found before, so that's really cool. Yeah, and finding that reasonably ornate piece of pipe bowl, that's that's pretty good going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm quite happy with that. Now, I've got something that I'm going to show you. Okay. Okay, you can look. Oh. Yeah, what's that? Oh, it's a kick-up. It's a kick up. So, okay, I know oh. what a kick up is. Aha, uh -huh. okay. It's a little difficult to explain, but I'll hold it the way that it would be. So, it would be like this. Uh -huh. And it's the very inside of uh, of a bottle. So, bo bottom. So, like a champagne bottle. You know how the champagne bottles usually go kind of up the way a little bit, uh, where you would put your hand to hold it. So, yeah. this is kind of where that bit is. And a kick up is typically this bit down here. And That's that one has a really nice um, air bubble in there. Oh, so it does, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's very nice. It's almost like a cup now, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. At first, you know, when I saw it, I thought, oh, I found a shot glass. <laughs> yeah, well, that's cool. We'll take that. So we had just said we were heading back to the car and Nicole looked down and found this. Now I know that these are a matter of taste but they're the classic harbour find or foreshore find. It is the pipe stem and this is such a long one. Mm. It's a long pipe stem, very similar to the one that you found uh, a little bit further up the shore. Yeah, let's take this one. There we are. Well that's right. cool. Yeah that is, that's very cool. Yeah. Now, uh, just as I asked Nicole to come in here and have a look at this, she made a wee gasp. Yeah. So we'll go over and we'll see what it was that caught her attention. Uh-huh. Okay, so this is the first time I think we've found anything quite like this. And again, an acquired taste, but this time, not just the stem, but a good part of the bowl as well. So that would have been a wee, a wee bowl, maybe a, you know, one of these wee tiny bowls. Yeah. Uh, when tobacco was really expensive, mm -hmm. you just popped a tiny wee nibble of tobacco in there. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all you could afford. Yeah. Let's see. Yep. Oops. Oh, that's got a little... You can see the little uh, base here as well. Yeah. Let's pop that up here and we can have a look at that. Okay. Well, that looks very, very small, the bowl. And as far as I know, the smaller the bowl, the older they are. Yeah, yeah, because tobacco was expensive. And as tobacco became increasingly inexpensive, uh, then the bowls got bigger. Now, I'm not sure if that is a glaze if that's decoration mm. on this pipe or if that's some form of dirt. Mm. So we'll have to take a closer look at that mm -hmm. and see what we can make of it. But that's an excellent find. Well, you've got to be very happy with that. That's an excellent find. I think we've found little pieces of bowls before, lots of little stem pieces, but never a stem attached to a bowl. And with that little stand, that little heel piece as well, yeah. which I think we'll find out the correct name of <laughs> when we get back home. That's very cool. This is my find of the day. <laughs> it's really cool, yeah. It's yeah well, very really happy good find. with that. 
So that's the water coming in. You can see it glisten here off the fourth as it approaches these yachts in the harbour. We're going to make our way back to the car. And once we get home, we'll take a closer look at the things that we've found today. Well, there we are. We're about a minute from the car. And Nicole looked down and found yet another one of these really long pipe stems. Yeah, how strange is that? <laughs> it's bizarre, isn't it? Yeah. We just have tiny pieces in fields. Mm -hmm. And just here, I think, three really long pipe stems. Yeah, and the ball. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay, let's get back to the car. <laughs> We had a really great day out at Lime Kilns. The weather was beautiful and we had some really awesome finds, particularly when we got round into the harbour. Early on, Nicole found these two shell pieces and wondered if perhaps they'd been used for button manufacturing. So we know that little buttons like these were made by boring holes in shells like these and then shaping them up. However, I seriously doubt that either of these shells were used in button manufacturing for the simple reason that button manufacturers were seldom so uneconomical as to bore a large hole in the middle of a shell and not take advantage of all the shell around the outside of that hole. I found this interesting piece of bottle. On closer inspection, we can see that it seems to have the words Kilmarnock Whiskey. Looking up these details, we can see that this bottle seems to date from around 1850, so somewhere around the middle of the 19th century. Originally, this bottle would have had the words Walker's Kilmarnock Whiskey written on the bottom. It's a very early example of a Johnny Walker's whiskey bottle. I also found this really odd looking piece. It might look a wee bit familiar, we've found something that looks a little bit like this before. Back when we were on West Weems, I found what I thought was a fossilised crab claw. And I've kind of speculated that this might also be a fossilised crab claw. The shape seems to suggest that it's, it looks very much like a crab claw. If we look inside, or we look to the the solid interior of this piece. It looks a little bit crystalline, like it might be flint, or maybe even quartz. If you know what it is, and you don't think it's a crab claw, please drop us a line and let us know. And up until we hear from you, we're going to imagine that this was a giant crab. When I was out wandering through the muds further out in the harbour, I found this object and I thought it might be some kind of insulator, similar to the kinds that we've been sent by Juliet and Roger. But, as soon as Nicole saw it, she said, Ah, you found a kick-up. If you want to know what a kick-up is, we'll show you some photographs just now. Nicole found this really intriguing and really lovely piece of glass. It's really small, it has very limited internal capacity, and we thought rather whimsically, maybe it's a woman's hip flask. Looking at it a little closer, we think not. Hip flasks tend not to have bases like this, and they tend to have a little metallic or sometimes a little leather sleeve over the bottom half of the bottle. So we don't think that this is a wee hip flask. What might it be? We think it might be a perfume bottle. As you can see, it holds very little inside. And it's quite an ornate little designed bottle as well. The crossed figure that you can see here reminds us a little bit of the Creed perfume bottles that were first made in the mid 1700s. We've had a little look at the Creed perfume bottles and we don't think that it quite matches up to that either. If we look very, very closely as it comes round here, there's some other aspect of design up here that we can't be quite sure of. We're not quite sure what that is at all. If we turn the bottle round to this side, 
If we look at the little cross design as it comes up here to where the brake is, we can see that there's another aspect of design, and that just doesn't match up with the creek bottles at all. It looks to us like this was the back of the bottle, and that there may have been a label attached here on the front of the bottle. We can also hear by looking at the base that the bottle is moulded. We can see the marks where the seams on either side meet here. So that makes it around 1930s or later. It's quite crudely designed. It's a pretty little bottle, but it's not the fanciest of glasswork. If we look at the bottle on this side, we can see that the glass is far thinner here than it is over on this side as well. So it's unevenly made. It would have been a pretty little object, but probably quite a cheap little object. If you think you can recognise this bottle and help us identify it, drop us a wee line. Last but by no means least, we found all these pipe fragments. We've never found longer pieces like these before. So it was really great to find some longer pieces. It was also really great to find another shard from a bowl fragment. And I think that the find of the day is this pipe here that Nicole found. It's awesome. It still has the stem and the bowl attached. And you can even see the little heel there at the bottom. This piece is a really special find for us. It's among the oldest things we've ever found. We reckon that by looking at this and the resources that we have available to try and date these pipes, that this one was made in around 1620 to perhaps 1650, maybe a little bit later than that. We wanted to confirm that because we're no experts, so we went to someone who knows their pipes and we asked Nicola White. So thanks very much Nicola, you helped confirm for us that this is indeed a clay pipe that dates to around 1620 to 1680. Now how can we tell that it comes from that time period? The first clue is the angle of the bowl. Rather than sitting at a right angle to the stem, the bowl is almost a continuation of the stem. The size of the bowl is the other big hint. It's a very small bowl and that's because tobacco was incredibly expensive. So all the details about this pipe, the thickness of the stem, the smallness of the bowl, and the angle that the bowl connects to the stem with, suggests that it's 1620s to 1680s. Last but not least, is this wee fragment of bowl that I found in the harbour area. It's really lovely. Now this is not dissimilar to the bowl piece that Nicole found back in North Queen's Ferry. It has a similar design here around the top of the bowl. But what makes this piece stand out, and I'm not sure if the light's helping you pick it up, but there appears to be a face design here, somewhere on the bowl. We'll try and take a photograph of that and inlay it, if it's not really clear. Because we can't make out any detail on this face, we can't say whether it was a commemorative or a decorative addition. If you think you can spot who that is, or you might have any indication of what this bowl might be, do let us know.
Thank you so much for watching, liking and commenting on the videos. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps us. Help us get to 5,000 and we're going to have that competition. Thanks too to everybody for helping support the channel through Etsy, Ko-fi and Amazon. That means a huge deal to us and it really helps. Thank you so much. Thank you.